Now we'll work through some examples, starting with this one, 2 thirds plus 1 fifth. Well, to add these two fractions, I need a common denominator. So I'm going to take the 2 thirds, and I'm going to multiply it by 5 over 5. And then I'm going to add my 1 fifth, but I'm going to multiply the 1 fifth by 3 over 3. And notice, in the denominators here, I'm going to have a 3 times 5 in both places. So I'll have a 15 as a denominator for both fractions. That's why I did that. Remember, multiplying by 5 over 5 is the same as multiplying by 1. So I've just, I'm, ju I'm just doing right here 2 thirds times 1. That doesn't really change the 2 thirds, but it changes the way it is written. It will now be written with a denominator of 15. And same thing here. I've got 1 fifth times 3 over 3. And that 3 over 3 is just a 1. So 1 fifth times 1 is still 1 fifth, but it's going to be written now with a denominator of 15. So this first fraction, I've got 2 times 5, which is 10, over 3 times 5, which is 15, plus the second fraction. In the numerator, I have 1 times 3, which is 3. And in the denominator, I have 5 times 3, which is 15. And now I'm adding. 10 over 15 plus 3 over 15, and that's going to give me 13 over 15 for my answer. In the second problem, I need to have a common denominator, and the least common denominator will be 12. And instead of writing out an intermediate step like I did up here, I'm just going to uh, attach the multiplication to each of these little fractions here. So I'm going to take this first fraction and I'm going to multiply it by 4 over 4 and take this second fraction and multiply it by 3 over 3. And I can just write those uh, extra fractions right there onto the original problem. That just saves me a little bit of writing. And now you can see what that results in. I have 4x over 12 minus this is 3x over 12. And now I can combine, combine these two fractions because they're both like fractions. They're both twelfths. 4x over 12 minus 3x over 12 is simply 1x over 12. And I'll just write that as x over 12. And in this example, I have 8 over a squared minus 4 over a cubed. I need a common denominator, and the, the least common denominator will be a cubed. And I can get this fraction, this first one, to have a denominator of a cubed if I multiply by a over a. So I'm just multiplying this first fraction by that. And I don't have to do anything to the second fraction. It already has a denominator of a cubed. And I haven't changed anything because I'm just multiplying this first fraction by 1. And I'm allowed to do that. I'm allowed to multiply by 1. So this whole expression now becomes 8a over a times a squared, which is a cubed. And then I still have my minus 4 over a cubed. So what does this equal? Well, I have 8a over a cubed minus 4 over a cubed. So this ends up being 8a minus 4 over a cubed. And I stop. I'm done. I cannot take this a and cancel one of these. And that's because I have this minus 4 here. If I didn't have that minus 4, then I could just cancel an A right here with one of those three. Because I can cancel factors. But A is not a factor there. 8A minus 4 is the entire numerator. So I can't cancel any, anything. At this point, I'm done. I can't simplify any further. So I'll just put a box around that. That's my answer. 8A minus 4 over A cubed.